So it's going to be the Chanticleers against the Horned Frogs on Tuesday night. Who who thought who saw that coming? I think everybody in college baseball back in February predicted right, right. a Tuesday night winner's bracket game between TCU and Coastal Carolina. Right, with the mighty Southeastern Conference one <laughs> defeat away from being totally out of the, the whole College World Series picture this year. Well, it's um, been kind of a crazy year for uh, the favorite teams. Only three national seeds made it here, and the three national seeds that made it all lost right. here in the first two games. I think it was a bad job of seeding. Now, I know Jim Schlossnagel will, will dispute that. He he says that you know a lot of it has to do with RPI and things like that, which I don't under, understand. But but I think they did a bad job of seeding. You know, it, you can never go wrong when when the SEC has a, has a lot of uh, national seeds because it's a powerful conference. But I think the fact that the Big 12 was so underestimated this year. It, it uh, well, you know, we're seeing the the first game today was 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 awfully close. I mean, those were two equally matched teams. Yeah, Texas Tech could just as easily be playing Tuesday night as the oh, Frogs. Yeah. yeah, those two lineups are very very tough on pitchers. They see a lot of pitches. They have long at bats. They really make the pitchers work. And you know, for as good a performance as Tech put up and as good a performance as TCU put up, there were still a lot of hits in that game, a lot of walks, a lot of men on base. Mm -hmm. And it took a three-run homer in the ninth inning from Luke and Baker, who is, you know, a transcendental talent. Did I say that right? Transcendental? Transcendent. Yeah, <laughs> transcendent. Transcendental talent. would be it. <laughs> he rose above this game yeah. at the right time to put his mark on it. But, uh, yeah, for a long time, those are, those are the two most even teams, the most evenly played game of the first two days. You know, as, as, um, as Luke and Baker is coming up against all these different coaches, they're all – singling him out on his advanced approach for being just a freshman and how he's able to he, he has a plan up there he studies the pitchers he knows what he's doing he knew with Robert Duggar the the uh, tech reliever was was doing against him in the ninth inning and uh, he hits a pitch that he had no business really hitting uh, a two-seamer that was riding inside on him designed to get him to roll over on him hit into a double play Instead, he elevates the ball, keeps it down the foul line for a game-winning home run. Yeah, 97 out of 100 Not hitters. bad for 100. Not bad for a freshman. <laughs> Not bad for a freshman. Most, most hitters foul that one off hard. Oh, yeah. You know, either into the ground or into the seats. Mm -hmm. And But if when you keep the barrel of the bat inside and behind the ball, it stays fair. And he's so strong, and that ball got out just like he was hitting it. Arms extended. I know. And, you know, the best thing uh, about pitching-wise is the Frogs did not waste a pretty good pitching performance by starter Jared Jansack. You know, you, you can't, if you expect to stay in the winner's bracket here, you've got to hit on your first two starting pitchers. It looks like Brian Howard is going to start uh, Tuesday night. That's what the indication was from Jim Slosnagel. And uh, they, if they can get another good pitching performance, then they'll be in pretty good shape. They've, they've never before been 2-0. No. In, in the college world. And I can't stress the value of being 2-0 and in this format because if you get to 2-0, and you move to Friday night. You're in the semifinals. Then you just have to split two games to reach the final. Right. If you don't get to 2-0, and if you come out of it 1-1, one and one, then you've got to go 3-0 and to get to the final. Right. Going 3-0 and versus splitting two games against this kind of field, this quality, right. tough order. But, you know, I'll, I'll say one thing in TCU's uh, uh, and they're good stead on this, though, is that their pitching staff is showing itself to be deeper than than, I, than we thought it was. The, the bullpen's done a great job. The you know the, here Brian uh, Trigloss called on today, and he gives them three innings. He did give up the go-ahead run, but he really pitched well, I thought, and um, you know kept them close enough for him to win the game in the ninth inning. Yeah, especially against a Tech lineup that a lot like TCU can hit the ball out at any point. You know, one through eight almost one through nine with those guys. So it's a it's a lineup where, as he talked to me about it, he said, you've got to keep the ball low. You've got to keep throwing low strikes. And it's hard for a pitcher to not want to throw a little high and, mm -hmm. you know, mix up the height and go in and out. But, you know, you've got to keep the ball low. Or it's, it's, it's death against these two lineups. I got to admit, I know nothing about Coastal Carolina. I did watch them against a, a team called LSU last week. And... Uh, I was amazed, like everybody else was. They're a tough team. They're they're tougher than, than people thought. Tonight's win over a very good Florida team with pitching galore yeah. was their fiftieth of the season, and mm. they played they played pretty clean baseball. They hustle. They get they're quick. They they catch the ball. I, 
TCU mm-hmm. is going to have its hands full. Don't don't let the name yeah. and don't let the mascot fool you. Uh, the Chanticleers versus the Horned Frogs is going to be a real test. Yeah, it is. It's going to be a test for both teams because TCU is really they're on a stride like we haven't seen all year from them. You know, they're 15 and two, and they're this isn't a February schedule that they're putting up 15 and two against. They've been some really good teams, and they're pitching well and they're getting you know hits at the right time. Uh, Jim Schlossnagel did mention post game that. Some of his freshman bats are starting to hit a wall a little bit. You know, they're just not seeing the good production. Good pitching, though. Yeah. But they're seeing good pitching. Yeah, they are. So this is going to be a very interesting game Tuesday night. I expect something a lot, a lot like we saw this morning, this afternoon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We'll be back for it. So let's do a little research on Coastal Carolina. Let's talk to Myrtle the more <laughs> tomorrow. Maybe we'll go down there right quick. <laughs> and we'll catch up with you guys Tuesday night.